Hello everybody and welcome back to another day of Gloomhaven. Today we'll be beginning with scenario 37, still continuing with our campaign of Diviner, Craigheart, and Light. Pause that. It's here. Okay, perfect. So like I said, starting next week we'll actually swap out some of the Diviner's cards on Wednesday and Thursday. Well, we'll see about Wednesday. Um, but uh, for now, we're going to continue playing with the, the deck we built thus far, and you get to enjoy a little bit more of Planner Fisher. Okay. Let's back them up. All right. Uh, we need to quickly do a city event. We won't have a road event going to Scenario 37. Do a city event. Okay. Nice. Solid. Way to go, Iron Thief. All right. So we gain ten gold each. Actually, was not familiar with this particular outcome. So I guess a while since I've seen this. Not that I particularly care about the ten gold each, but yeah, why not? You know, sure, it helps. We appreciate it. Okay, so rules for this scenario: add three curse cards to each character's attack modifier deck as a scenario effect that affects no one. Uh, escape occurs when all characters. All right, so the goal for the scenario is all characters must escape through exit A. So these are these tiles up here. Escape occurs when all characters are either standing on an exit A or have become exhausted while standing on an exit A. If any character becomes exhausted while not occupying an exit A, the scenario is lost. Ugh. Man, wish we had our invis cloak and we could do the, the rift cheese, huh? We would go like set up a rift here. I mean, we'll clear this room, I guess. Set up like a rift here. And the mind heap just holds this door with invis while the diviner goes like what? We'd have to go to here, and then it's like one, two, three, four. One, two, four. One, two, three, four, and create a rift. Uh, the fun we could have. That would require some different items to do this. All right. We'll just have to play this scenario the old-fashioned way. Instead. Okay, as usual, not drawing any battle goals because I don't care about getting check marks for anyone. Hey, Grape Boy, get some rest. Yeah, I'm a bit more rested today. Thank you. Um... Yeah, all right, so anyway, I quickly alluded to this. Well, and I'll say it, I'll mention it at the end. But yeah, I'll be doing a full stream today because next week, not because of how busy you're going to be, but actually, so next Monday it's going to be 39, and then next Tuesday it's going to be 41, and then 39 next Wednesday. So I certainly won't be streaming Monday or Tuesday. These days matter a little bit less to me these days. Those days matter a little bit less to me these days. That, that's a little bit clearer. Uh, the Wednesday, we'll see. I mean, hopefully I can make it on Wednesday. 39 is... Still pretty rough though. I mean, 41, dear God. Huh. But anyway, yeah, I'm, I'm feeling a bit better today. All right, so let's get into this. Uh, first one, we've got Lurkers and Deep Terrors. So the Deep Terrors shouldn't reach us as long as we fight back here. I guess this looks like kind of a standard sort of fighting situation where we probably want to try to set up a Rift and some obstacles because we've got but at this point what i mean by this is let's see one two three six yeah none of the deep terrors can reach us from where they are so the only things we're currently concerned with fighting and they they can summon but they can only summon when they hit so we don't have to actually worry about these for the time being like when they're ranged enemies that we have to worry about obviously things are a little bit different but here we know that these can't possibly reach us as long as we stay like back here basically so accordingly we just have to worry about these and in situations where we just have to worry about a clump of melee enemies the most obvious thing to do is just to set up some rocks and some rifts so if we're in set of rocks as usual we want to do this as early as possible just to clarify i am absolutely going to endurance potion on save all people dwarf did you uh, you get to play a little bit of um of the digital gloom maven then i know you said that it was sitting on your computer while you were at work uh, do we want to make any changes to our decks i think our decks are probably fine as is Maybe another move card for her. I think this is technically a move five. This is a move four. This is a move three. And this is a move three. I think we're fine. One scenario. So how did you enjoy it? And down here we have plenty of movement, I don't think. It's pretty good. Okay. Uh, 
So I don't know exactly how we're gonna place the rocks. We move here. We move here, we can get hit, but then we could at least get a rock that hits this one. Problem is we can't rock there and there. Anywho, we're certainly gonna do our disarm rift. Where are ya? We don't really need to double rift here. The thing is we do need good initiative, however. To make sure that we get our rifts down before they come. I think I'm going to play this anyway, just because my best initiative. I'll probably end up just endurance potioning it, because there's a pretty big difference between 21 and 30, and by 21 this can even be 11 again because of our uh, boost speed. Getting the disarm rift down before the lurkers approach us is just so very important. Lurkers aren't the fastest enemies, but they can go early. Okay, and so for us, we're going to do the same thing we always do, which is play Mind's Weakness to go late, hitting the enemies after they've moved up. Setting that up, and since we're going to have to move, we might as well do a move and attack with Dark Frenzy. So basically the classic opening for this party. Rock Slide, Disarm Rift, and Mind's Weakness with Dark Frenzy. I ran Brute Slash Cry Card and decided to start in easy mode since there's no perks, and I couldn't pick gear. The adventure mode is weird, but it's its own thing and pretty fun. So as a Brute, you didn't, I mean... So the Kragar can do without having an axe, right? I mean, the Kragar doesn't have the most important axes, especially in a two-player party. You have what? Nature's Lift, which doesn't really matter that much. Forceful Storm, which doesn't matter that much. Do we have... Oh, yeah, no, you... This is a heaving swing. That's kind of unfortunate. But the Brute, it would really suck, right? I mean, like, the Brute's thing is Balanced Measure. Not being able to have Balanced Measure from level one would make the Brute honestly terrible. Like, that's your attack four. Without that, you're so much weaker uh, the brute might have the biggest power level disparity like the mind thief has maybe the most powerful level x i mean the most powerful x card for a level one character but but yeah like i can't think of another class that would suffer as much as the brute for missing out on one of their x cards as the brute would for balance measure that seems like i said pretty miserable to be honest I don't think I would enjoy playing a Brute at early levels without Balance Measure. Like, you just don't really do much damage. You really just have Leaping Cleave plus um, Skewer, and that's it. Oh, wait, God, no, you don't have Skewer either. Oh, my God. What? No, all right, yeah, that, that is actually miserable. You have no good attacks. You have the Disarm Attack, which is fine, but no damage. And you have just the top of Leaping Cleave then, and that's it? That's insane. That... That is terrible, actually. Yeah, I don't... Yeah. I mean, the more you think about it, like... Uh, yeah, so in the end, the 21 works out because now we don't have to use our, our um, boots of speed. We can save them. All right, this works. Okay, so first up is Mr. Crycart. We can move up here as long as we move back so that we make sure that we're out of range. I mean, I guess... Even if we are here, we're not going to be in range for them because this one doesn't have line of sight on us, right? So this is fine no matter what. Because I want to move up here so I can place a rock behind. Because if I stay back here, the issue is I can place a rock here or here, but I can't... Yeah, I can't get all of them with rocks. So if by moving up one... Again, we're, we're perfectly safe here, I think. And then we're going to... So we move using the bottom of unstable all people. We are going to use an endurance potion charge to recover. Unstable all people. Let's crush all our items, huh? All right, use an Endurance Potion Charge to recover on Stable All People, as usual, because we have an on-hand size, and Stable All People is good. We're going to create Earth, gain one experience, that doesn't really matter, and drop some rocks. So, would we rather have the Choke Point be here, or the Choke Point be here? I think having it... I guess by having it here, we make it more 1-1. One, one. By having it here, then there's two spots afterwards, so they can fan out a little bit more. But we can also fan out as well. Hmm, that's interesting. And we could even go here, here, if we really wanted to create a more difficult choke point. I know. I guess at the same time, having rocks behind them is good for heaving swing. So if they, let's see how much movement they have. So they have plus one movement this turn, which means five movement on all of them. They'll go after the Diviner. So, I mean, they're all basically going to rush into here. Unless we... We do want them to move up, though. Because we could try to set it up so that they get blocked. 
but we don't want that. We want them to move through because this disarms all of them for two rounds. All right, so I think we're going to go like this, like this, I guess like this. Again, we're just placing this rock here as well to set up more rocks behind them to use for um, brutal, whatever it's called, and heaving swing. Okay, and so this does two damage to each of them. Directly. Okay. So we're done. So now it's the Diviner's turn. So we're going to use Void Snare. Place one Rift token on any unoccupied hex within range three. When any enemy enters a hex containing a Rift token this round, it gains disarm. Now we're going to place our Rift here. It should be fine. And then we're going to use the bottom. I guess we could just create another rift now. We don't really need to move. The pulling doesn't matter so much, but just having another rift is going to make Ethereal Vortex better sooner. And Ethereal Vortex will be good against these enemies since they all have one or two shield. Ethereal Vortex is actually quite good against them. So I guess I'll just put it... So I, actually, this one's better here. It gives me more flexibility. They're still going to run through it. And I guess I'll put another one here. I'll just use the bottom of Fount to place one Rift token in any unoccupied hex within range 3. Place it there, I won't be doing any pulling because I would rather them run through the Rifts, again because this will disarm them for two rounds rather than simply one. Okay, I'm done. I can always Endurance Potion something else. Not that big of a deal. So the Lurkers go, they have plus one movement, so again this gives them five. One, two, three to there, disarm. One, two, three, four to there. One, two, three, four. Yeah, that does put it one book to there. Ooh, nice little clumping. <laughs> yeah, because didn't, didn't they chain? Isn't the hammer only single target for some reason? That's what Marcel was saying. But does that mean that you couldn't even use it? I mean, you could could you still use it on one of the attacks from Save Well People, or would it just not let you use it on a multi-target ability? Wait a second. That's exceptionally dumb. I hadn't even thought about that. So you don't get to choose your starting items. They make you take the hammer for the Kragart, which is really not a great idea because the Kragart absolutely needs Boots of Striding. But if you're going to give the hammer to the Kragart, the only reason to do this is specifically because of the interaction with Unstable Bluff Evil. Oh, man. It, it seems like there are just a tremendous amount of bad decisions. It does not let you use Warhammer with top of Unstable Bluff Evil only when you consume Earth. Anywho, we're done there, so or the lurkers are done, I should say. So now it is the Mind Thief's turn, so we're going to use the bottom of Dark Frenzy as a move 3, attack 3. Here, because we need to get next to them to hit. Any tabletop game suggestion? Uh, looking for a few. You mean games on tabletop simulator, um, Zombie Killer, or tabletop games in general? I have one that actually works for both of those, but otherwise the suggestions might be a bit different. Games on Tabletop Simulator. Yeah, so obviously there is Gloomhaven, as Dwarf mentioned, which is what we're playing right now, which is free uh, once you have Tabletop Simulator. So that's definitely a, a strong recommendation if you already have that or you've already played that. Um, my, my other big, 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 big recommendation is Spirit Island. The Spirit Island on Tabletop Simulator has everything. Very easy to use. Um, that's excellent. It's also free. Uh, Spirit Island's a, a great game to begin with. And again... Free, well implemented on Tabletop Simulator. Yeah, it sounds like a home run. So that would be my second one. Otherwise, I would also recommend Mage Knight. There's a good, very good Mage Knight mod as well. It has a couple of bugs. It's not as perfectly implemented as Gloomhaven or uh, Spirit Island, but it's still a really good game, especially if you're going to play solo. Mage Knight on... I mean, I've played probably 20 campaigns of Mage Knight solo on Tabletop Simulator. It's excellent, very easy to do. It's much, much faster than having to play uh, physical Mage Knight. Also free, so that's a big recommendation. 
And that's about it. Those are my biggest recommendations, are those three. So Gloomhaven, Spirit Island, and Mage Knight. Otherwise, there's also Descent. The Descent mod for Tabletop Simulator is good because it has everything. It's really difficult for me to go back to Descent after playing Gloomhaven, or even like Mage Knight. Um, but if you like dice and that sort of thing, uh, it's also free. I mean, I don't have any recommendations for non-free mods on Tabletop Simulator because I've never actually bought anything. I've only used free ones. But yeah, I think Descent is probably fine as well. So, but yeah, Spirit Island and Mage Knight would be my biggest recommendations. Both of these can be played solo. Spirit Island I don't find as fun playing solo. Mage Knight is excellent solo. In fact, I think, so I still think Gloomhaven is, I have more fun playing Gloomhaven solo than Mage Knight. Um, that being said, sorry, let me, I'll write it down. I think it's two words. This and those would be those. But I think Mage Knight is actually a better solo game, like, relative to the game itself. Like, Gloomhaven is still better solo, just because Gloomhaven is such a good game. But Mage Knight is also a very good game, and solo Mage Knight is, might actually be the best version of Mage Knight. So it's, it gets a strong recommendation for playing solo. Especially because the mod that for it now is for the Ultimate Edition, which has a much better rulebook than the previous one, so it's at least semi-comprehensible, -com which is a, a step in the right direction. Uh, okay, so we do remove three, attack three, we create ice, and we're going to put our attack three. What about multiplayer? Okay, so for multiplayer games... Well, I mean... Spirit Island is a multiplayer game, so that that would be my number one free. I mean, again, I don't have non-free. I mean, I've never. I think Scythe is pretty fun. I don't love Scythe, but I enjoy it, and you can certainly play that on. And that's not free, but that's on Tabletop Simulator, and that's a good multiplayer game. Um, Spirit Island is multiplayer and is excellent. It's cooperative, but I would say at anything from two to four players, it's very good. Mage Knight can be played multiplayer, but I wouldn't recommend really playing with more than two people. Um, two people, I think, is actually quite fun for Mage Knight as well. More than that, it's pretty long. Long wait times as well. Um, I'm trying to think. Anything else here? Not here. No, that's, that's about what I've got. Yeah, I haven't played any of these, so I can't really provide recommendations. Maybe someone in chat can. I like Pathfinder Adventure card game and Arkham Horror card game. Both are co-op. Oh, those are on Tabletop Simulator as well? Yeah, I've played. A, I've actually played the physical version of Pathfinder Adventure card game, and I think it's pretty fun. Um, and I've never played Arkham Horror. Um, Lovecraft appeals to me, but the... I don't know. Like, everyone loves that card game. There are mods for them on TTS. I actually have to look into that. So everyone like speaks very highly of the Arkham Horror card game. And... Like, it should appeal to me, because I like card games, and I like co-op. But every time I look into the game, and I've looked into the game so many times, it just feels like the mechanics of what you do in the game don't appeal to me so much. I don't know why. Like, I really don't know why. I really should give it a try, because I feel like I'm just missing out. And I, I mean, I can't explain why I am, because I just, some, like, intangible thing. I should give that a try. Thank you for those recommendations. I actually should write those down. So, because, yeah, I actually have, we have... The, just the base version of the Pathfinder Adventure card game. We have that back uh, in storage, not here, so I haven't actually been able to play it for a while, so I'd be happy to pop that open. Just writing this stuff down. Thank you very much, Cyrus. All right, so we're gonna make our attack three range three. We're gonna hit number six back here. This thing has two shield, whereas this only has one shield. It's better to do the damage to the one that has less shield. Um, it doesn't really change anything if we kill one in the front or one in the back because there's only two spots they can attack from anyway, and they're all disarmed for next round. Um, killing this one or killing this one is exactly the same in terms of the number of attackers. So again, I'd rather attack this one, not this one, because this one has one less shield and I'll kill it more quickly. And I'd rather not attack this one because it would be disadvantaged since I'm making a range attack. So we're going to attack number six with Dark Frenzy. So we have an attack three, range three. Model doesn't matter. I'm not even going to bother placing this. We get plus two, so this is five. It has one shield, so it takes four down to eight. 
Okay, then we're going to use the top of mine's weakness, activating it, so this just gives us an attack three. We're gonna target number three here. Okay, four, so three actual damage. Down to nine. We have mine's weakness left. All right, the deep terrors go, but like I said, they're they're doing stuff which doesn't affect us at this range. Technically, they're summon thing, but again, one, two, three, four, five, six. This would work, but it actually doesn't have line of sight because that would pass through here, and it doesn't have line of sight to use. So actually, we're still perfectly safe. Their longest range thing is six, which is their summon, and none of them are actually in range six to hit. So we are good. Okay, so what are we gonna do? I mean, I want to get another vor I mean, another rift up first before hitting them with a hero vortex. I'm just afraid they're all going to be dead before we get a chance with that. There's also call the nether. I mean, I basically want to use all my attacks. Like, I want this, I want this, and I want this. I'm just afraid all the enemies are going to die. Maybe it's better to say... I mean, I guess the thing is, the hero vortex isn't going to be good afterwards. So... Maybe I, I use it now. I could actually do bottom call of the nether if I get dark to create a rift. This way I could have three rifts for ethereal vortex. It's even necessary. What is the mind beef gonna do? I guess this top attack. I don't really want to create dark then, huh? We don't need to stun anything, so I guess we can just... Oh, this actually can create dark. Yeah, we might as well give ourselves an advantage if we're going to be making this many attacks. I could use Blind Destruction here, but I should probably just save it for the Deep Terrors because these Lurkers are really non-threatening at this point. Pushing stuff isn't really great from where we are. I guess just Massive Boulder on the back one, doing a bit of Splash, rather than wasting Blind Destruction here. I mean, wasting. Using kind of unnecessarily because these things are so non-threatening and the Diviner is just going to destroy all of them. Okay, so in this case, the Mind Thief is doing a bunch of damage to this one. Cryocard's doing a little bit of damage here and here, and a fair amount of damage here. Yeah, we'll have Dark. I guess we can just use Call of the Nether and Ethereal Vortex then. This is fine. The only shame is that we're wasting the... We're not going to have the top of Ethereal Vortex, but I don't think that's such a big deal. Once we start fighting the Deep Terrors, we'd rather actually deal damage to them with something like Planner Fisher rather than just apply curses to them. Because they can still do scary stuff like summoning through the curses. Or this sort of nonsense. Okay, so the Mind Thief's up first. We're going to begin by using the bottom of Empathetic Assault. We're going to do a move two. We're just going to move in place. Heal two self, which strengthens us. And our move two, we're going to create dark. Then we're going to use the top of Corrupting Embrace. So this is going to be an attack three poison, attack four muddle, both targeting Lurker number three, both with advantage. Okay, so three is two damage, and then four is eight, is seven. So two plus seven is nine. Really? We just killed it. Again, we got a plus zero on our attack three, which meant we did two damage. We went from nine to seven, and then because of the poison, our next attack three is actually an attack four, which we crit on, so this is an eight, minus one for the shield of seven. Yeah, we do in fact kill it. Vantage, pretty good. Okay. So the Mind Thief's done. So then next up is the Cry Cart. So again, we're gonna move first as well, just to give ourselves strength. And, oh, we actually had this Earth we could have used to hit something with the Charmer Blade, but oh well. Um, I mean, we might as well move up. No, because we don't want to be disadvantaged. They're moving before us. That doesn't really matter too much. In the end, we're actually not gonna need to use this bottom because now we only need two Rifts. All right, so I'm just going to move in place with a cry cart using the bottom of Blunt Force, which gives me Retaliate. This doesn't matter, but more significantly gives me Strengthen. I'm going to attack Lurker number six using the top of Massive Boulder. Ah, oh, brutal. Destroyed by ambiguity. I would much, obviously, much, much, much prefer the crit than the plus one, but uh, you can't always choose these things. So we just get plus one, which really is just three damage here, putting the sound up. Oops. Down to 5, which is 1 direct damage to this, down to 15. And this one ends up immobilized. Okay, so the Lurkers go. Lose all their conditions, don't do anything else. Alright, so then the Diviner goes at 43. So I'm just going to Endurance Potion this, because there's no real reason to 
get an extra rift. Our rifts are going to be too far back to reach the deep terrors anyway. And I guess this would allow us to move one that way, but I don't think we care enough about that. I think I'd rather just have called another back for when we start fighting the deep terrors. So I guess I can actually just use the Theory of Vortex first. So I move all Rift tokens up to two hexes and then do an attack two, pierce two, curse, targeting all enemies occupying a hex containing a Rift token. I'm going to move this Rift token over here. These are melee attacks, so I don't need to move away to lose disadvantage. So I'll attack the Elite and then the regular. I might as well get advantage. For, uh, no, I think I'd rather have another Deep Terrors. Okay, so the Elite first. Nice. And then the regular. Oh, nice. So we have two Pierce and they only have two shield maximum. So in both cases, we get five and five. This goes down to 10. And this is actually just dead. Diviner just clean it up. So unfortunately, we only give them one first. Uh, this one is also muddled, in fact. This could actually matter. I guess theoretically, it probably doesn't. It could. You're muddled. And then we're going to use the bottom of Call of the Nether simply as a default move too. We're going to move to here. We'll also pick up a coin. Yeah, we're still out of range. Because we use this as a default move too, we're going to Endurance Potion it back. Again, so that we can have it against those Deep Terrors, because why not? We have an odd hand size, so this gives... All right, the Deep Terrors go. They have no attacks, which are in range. They're attacking at range 3 here. Okay, so what's up next? Didn't create ice, huh? Hmm. A bit annoying. Because we had to create a dark for the diviner. Which we didn't even end up using, huh? Brutal. So happens to us a lot. The problem is it would be really good to execute. I mean to kill the or to stun this. The annoying thing is. Not so easy to do because the mind thief stuns then we i mean i guess then we're using shared nightmare but shared nightmare would be better against the deep terrors but if we go late and we like try to hit the deep terrors with shared nightmare using this dark here like this leave our allies to take care of that um lurker let's see can our allies take care of it how will the crack art man so with, we have Earth. Oh, we were supposed to create Earth with uh, Massive Boulder last turn. So Brutal Momentum gives us an attack 5 plus 4 direct damage. This is 9. Yeah, this thing has 12 effective health, so it's not, not really going to be a kill. So then I guess we would just need a little more help from the Diviner, and hopefully that's enough. The Diviner also wants to go over here and hit these things more than have to help kill Lurker. <sighs> Fine, I guess the Mind Thief can't be so greedy to go for this this turn. We need to wait one more turn. We have to finish off this stupid thing. In that case, we want to create Dark again. And I guess we're just going to attack with this. The big attack. And this will allow us to go before and use the Dark, I guess, to do some deck stacking. We need to go before 29.67. So we basically have to play our 23. Is that fine? Yeah, that's fine. Or we can do 37 and just use the Boots of Speed. Honestly, we'll probably have an opportunity to use um to Long Rest here. So I think it's actually fine to just use our Boots of Speed to do this. Still, their Fate is so much better to play here. Okay. And so then we're going to use Brutal Momentum as we plan. This should hopefully take care of it. Hopefully it goes after 29. 38. All right. So we're going to begin by using Boots of Speed, reducing our initiative by 10 on the Diviner. So the Diviner goes from 37 down to 27. So the Kragart is first at 23. Ah, oh, this sucks. Our, our initiative would have been good enough to go later than them. The problem is they have their summoning thing, which is at 96, which we can't actually go after. It would have been perfect if we'd been able to do our turn moving up to them. <sighs> Only the Kragart could have just done 12 damage instead of 10 or something like that. Come on, Kragart. Jeez. Only like 10 damage in a turn, like non-losses. What is this? All right, so we're going to use the bottom of Meteor as a move four jump. These things have one, two, three, four range, so we can even go to here. I guess the... No, because we need to be here, actually. There. And this gets to the point. We're going to do a move four jump to there. Then we're going to use the top of Brutal Momentum as an attack three, push two. 
We will be using the push. We'll be pushing into this obstacle right there. All right, so we have an attack three. We're going to consume the earth using our armor blade to add plus two to our attack. So we have an attack five with advantage. Okay. So our five is seven, but it has two shields, so it takes five plus four direct damage from push push. Puts it down to one. Yeah, the mind thief really had to help with this. Brutal. All right, so then the diviner is up now. Yeah, the mind thief would have been able to take care of business in the end. <sighs> That's really frustrating. We're not actually even going to be able to do anything with the mind thief over here. We're actually just going to have a wasted turn. Frustrating. Oh well. And then they're going to go after us next round. Okay, so we have two things to do here. I guess we can use Seal Their Fate first. Can't actually move to there though, which is annoying. We have to make a disadvantage attack. Yeah, so be it. So we'll move to here with Seal Their Fate, and then we make an attack two, range three, double curse, targeting the elite here. So we honestly, if we fail to kill it, it's not the worst thing ever. So then we give it curses. Okay, uh, so this is actually ambiguous. Maybe, unfortunately. So we actually end up with the first one. If if this was actually shield one self and shield one self here, then it would actually not be ambiguous. But in this case, actually, no, I don't think it would be ambiguous. Well, it actually might be because of how weird it is. But anyway, this is definitely ambiguous. So we get the first one, which is a plus three. Um, so it makes our attack end up being five. All right, get out of there. And then we're going to use the top of Envision the Course, Consuming the Dark. We get two back two decks. Up four. So we'll do the Mind Thief as usual. And probably the Cryguard as well. Alright. I mean, we don't really care to have the Muddle anytime soon, but it also doesn't hurt to have it. We want more damage sooner as well. Because there's always the possibility that we can strengthen ourselves past the plus zero at some point. It's not guaranteed, but we'll see. All right, so the cry heart. Yep. All right, it looks like a cry heart deck. I mean, it's really important to do the cry heart. It's very worthwhile because if we find like a crit or a plus two or something big, it helps a lot when hitting with blind destruction. Unfortunately, here that's not the case, but I think it was still correct to take a look there. Okay, so we're done. So then the mind thief goes. So we have a move to here. This makes us a biz. It's new dark. Thus far, everyone has picked up one coin exactly. Nice. Balance and all things. Alright, that's the end of the round. Like I said, now we're gonna get dicked by them going after our 79. I can feel it. I can feel it. The problem is the diviner actually gets hit by their line attack. But I guess only I mean like just having one person get hit by the line attack actually isn't such a big deal. I think it's probably still worth doing that. I think we'll use this to move up because then we can use these two cards, which are actually quite reasonable the following turn. Again, so it's better to go late. Again, going late does lead to us getting hit here, but we still go before the summon and most other stuff shouldn't hit us. And again, only one enemy hitting one of us is fine. All right, so same story here. We also kind of want to go late and hit with blind destruction. And yeah, Cataclysm as a move is fine. We certainly don't need to attack with Cataclysm here. Our enemies left in the room. Yeah, I knew it. Oh, I knew it. God. That sucks. That really sucks. All right. So, right guards up first. We've got to move through with Cataclysm. So we're going to go to here. Yeah, that's annoying. Honestly, whatever, then we're just going to get hit by them no matter what. All right, we're going to move there with Cataclysm, and then we're going to use Blind Destruction as an attack for range for all allies and enemies adjacent to the target suffer damage equal to the damage the target suffered. So we're going to attack the Elite, number nine. So if a plus one immobilize, I'm not bothering to place the immobilize. This is an attack five in the end. So five damage here, five damage here. And five damage here. Okay, then the diviner's up next. We're going to do a teleport four, which gives shield one to everything within range uh, three, which all eyes within range three. 
We're going to go like that. And we're going to use the top of Planner Fisher. Place one Rift Token on any unoccupied hex within range 5. Attack 3, target all enemies within range 2 of this Rift Token model. We're going to place a Rift Token here. It doesn't really change too much before we place it. It could place it here, but we're going to place it in an obstacle. And this gives us an Attack 3 model targeting all of these enemies. So we'll do 4, 7, 9 in that order. Um, I guess we're planning on long resting, so honestly we might as well just use our goggles here as well. So, 4, 7, 9 in that order. Okay. So this is actually not ambiguous. Has anyone actually taken damage though? No. Uh, so this is a 3, so 4. This one's dead. 7. Oh, the curse would be nice. We actually do gain the regen. And this one's also dead. So no curse, we get the dies, and then nine. All right, so here we do get a curse. So our three becomes a six and one curse. So six puts this down to four, and we shuffle a curse into their deck. It's muddled, but I'm not gonna bother because I actually do know that it dies. And I'm overkilling a little bit. God, the one-two punch of Blind Destruction plus Planner, Planner Fisher with Diviner plus Cryguard. Mm. A little filthy, but also very satisfying. All right, so next up, the Mind Thief. We're going to do a move four jump with feedback loop. One, two. That doesn't come with us. One, two, three, four to here. And then we're going to use the top of Shared Nightmare. Uh, we can consume the dark. It doesn't really matter. To make an attack three range for target two, Poison Curse, which creates ice. Just attacking the elite. This is the only thing left. Oh, what do you know? We have a plus two, which means our attack does five, which means this is dead. We don't give any curses, and that's the end of the round. All right, well, we're just going to move up and pick up a coin here. Also just going to move a bit, I suppose. Not enough to make it to a coin, unfortunately. A big move for us. I kind of don't have a lot to do here. I think I wouldn't mind putting a Bless into the Mind Thieves deck. Honestly, that will shuffle away the plus zero as well, which is not bad. So I'm probably going to long rest next turn. Since both my other characters are going to long rest, it makes sense to just synchronize long rest rather than spending a turn doing nothing. Um, this also just allows me to use my Boots of Striding to make it to a coin this turn, which is nice. So the real question is, I'm going to play this because this actually does something. What card would I rather lose? Of all these three. Definitely not this. I hate you just unsaved love people. I guess the initiative does actually matter. Honestly, kinetic assault is honestly probably just worse than unsaved love people. We rarely well, but now that we have uh, the tremor blade, kinetic assault can be a move one attack six. Get a bit better. Maybe I don't want to lose either of these, so it doesn't matter. I'd rather lose something else here. I'm sure that I would. Yeah, 13 initiative can actually be very significant against horrors, which we know are coming up in this scenario as well. All right, let's just play these cards. The Mind Thieves up first. We're going to do a move 5 with Cranium Overload. I'll move to this coin just because we put this out of the way. Okay, done there. Then the Cracker goes. And when you use the bottom of the Kinetic Assault as default move 2, plus my Boots Striding for a total 4 movement. 1, 2, 4 to here this and then I'm going to use the top of rumbling advance creating earth and doing a heal for bless on the mind thief doesn't heal anything but it does give a bless which never hurts okay and then the diviner goes so we really have nothing that does anything here so we're just going to do one of these as a default move to here. And that's it. Around. Triple long rest. Okay. So we will not bring back the mind's weakness. Or we choose to lose.
kind of tempted to maybe just lose Cranium Overload. I do need a lot of movement to successfully complete the scenario, but I still have a move 4, move 5, move 4, move 3, move 2, move 2. I have a lot of movement. Probably fine to just lose this. Yeah, yeah, I'll just get rid of that. That's fine. Also, during my long rest, I'm going to use a minor mana potion to create dark. What are we getting rid of? Not this. Yeah, honestly, kinetic assault is fine. Fair thing. And refresh this. Refresh this. Refresh this. Hello, been a while. How's it going? Hey, Luigi. It has been a while. Uh, it's going well. How are you? Quite busy, but other than that, quite not bad. We still have a fair amount of curses to go, so I don't mind keeping Call of the Nether. Basically, never want to lose any of my cards, huh? Maybe just Envision. It's an escape scenario, not a killing scenario. So deck stacking, while it does do something, isn't the most valuable thing in the world in the end. And we just do so much damage at this point that we can actually just avoid. We we don't actually have to deck stack to deal damage, basically. Okay, so I'm gonna go in with this plus this. Pretty good, I think. We should go in with our big. Well, if we do the move three, probably doesn't. With range three from here, we can reach here. Let's move this way so we don't see. Probably safer to just do the teleport move here. This this will always be good. We do teleport move plus. And the question is better planner fisher or call down there? Probably planner fisher first. More damage. Muddle is also a form of mitigation, even though we don't have that many curses for it to be that valuable. Doing all right. Have you checked out the new Gloomhaven on Steam yet? I have not, but people have talked about it a fair amount in the chat and. Uh, while I am eventually very interested in the finished or mostly finished product, what it currently is uh, doesn't really appeal to me. Have you? Um, so the question is, should we leave with Blind Destruction? Probably not. We don't know how clumped the enemies are going to be. It would be a shame to waste Blind Destruction. So I think we can... Oh, yeah, no, we should actually just Rock Slide. Yeah, we'll just go with Rock Slide as we usually do. Even if we're not going to have the Disarm Rift the first turn, we don't know what's in there. Rock Sliding is still good. It can mitigate melee attackers, and it can also just damage ranged attackers. So I think either way, it's fine. Okay, so the Mind Thieves up first. We're going to use the Bottom of Dark Frenzy as a move three, one. All right, let's see what's going on here. Chest here. All right, no. do eventually have a chest there, but for now, just some traps. Here. So in this room we have one elite horror, one elite lurker, and two regular lurkers. Okay. Really no deep terrors even? Crazy. I thought there'd be at least one. Okay, you go there, there, go there, and you go there. What are these traps? These are damage and immobilized traps. All right, just tried out one scenario this morning. It's more difficult than I was expecting. Yeah, it seems like it's kind of an artificial difficulty by eliminating uh, things you're supposed to have, right? Like removing the X cards, not letting you use your items, stuff like that. I mean, I'm happy that it's difficult, mostly because they don't give you X cards to start, I think. Yep, exactly. I was just talking to this, or about this with Dwarf. Dwarf said he was playing the Brute, and I actually hadn't even thought about it. Because at first I was like, man, playing the Brute without balanced measure, that much sucked. You would only have Leaping Cleave and Skewer. And then I was like, wait a second. You also don't have Skewer. So, I mean, you really just have Leaping Cleave and, I guess, Spare Dagger. So, like, obviously there's some classes that are less affected by it. For example, a Scoundrel without the X cards, probably fine. Um, I mean, yeah, you can swift bow a little bit, but it's okay. But, uh, yeah, I mean, a brute without the X cards is insane. 
Braggart, it's kind of all right. You miss Heaving Swing, but you're still okay. I mean, Heaving Swing is good, but I mean, it's not as bad as losing like two of those cards. And yeah, doing the level up system where you have to level up, I mean, take X cards that level up just seems like it. Yeah, I don't know. I don't even know. Tried Brute Slash Scoundrel. Okay. Yeah, so like I said, I mean, Scoundrel, Scoundrel might actually be like the best at level one with the way they set that game up. Oh no, but Scoundrel starts with Goggles. Doesn't have an Invis Cloak. Yeah, that's kind of crazy as well. That's also quite costly. Not being able to have an Invis Cloak or Boots of Striding or anything good instead of having Goggles. Like, goggles on a Scoundrel? This doesn't even make sense. Goggles are good for multi-target attacks. Yeah, but Smoke Bomb. Timmy's. Timmy's. All right. What are these things up to? Not moving. Moving, but minus one. So this is three movement. Smoke Bomb doesn't work correctly. Then what is even the point of the goggles? Got a meeting half on. All right, see you, Dwarf. So three movement. One, two, three. One, two, three. So none of these can reach us here, but we can't actually hit anything with our... Um... That almost cost me the win when I tried it. Interesting. So we need to move one more to first of all be able to hit two targets with Shared Nightmare, also to be able to have Dark Frenzy hitting. I think just going up to here is fine. We don't need to go further than that. And we still have being able to play some obstacles with the Crag Heart to mess up their movement. So I think this will work just fine. Okay, so we're gonna stop there. We're going to use the bottom of Dark Frenzy as an attack for your range three. This creates ice. We're going to hit the only thing we can hit with that, which is our investor number two. Also the most threatening enemy. Bad. Now we ended up with a plus zero no matter what. Down to 23. Then we're going to use the top of Shared Nightmare. We're going to consume dark. Which gives us attack three, range four, target two, poison curse. We actually got this power potion, but we could either use this now or we could save it for a corrupting embrace. I think we might as well just use it now, to be perfectly honest. We'll go ahead and pop our power potion. Really no reason to stun any of these things. So we'll hit Harrow Infestor 2 and then Lurker 3. So each of these are attack, 4, poison, curse. So 2 and then 3. Okay. So 6 and 6. Both cases. We already have ice, so that doesn't change anything. So 6 is actually 6 here. 6 is only 5 here. Okay. A poison there. A poison there. And two curses. Not bad. Okay, so then the crack card's up next. We're gonna use the bottom on save buff people. I'm pretty positive we do need to use a boots of striding here. So one, two. Yeah, because otherwise we don't have a line of sight here, and I want to place a rock there. So three. Maybe just even go to here. Let's see. I think this works. Okay, so we'll move to there. So again, one, two, or I guess one, two, three, whatever, using the bottom of unsaved all people as a default move. Two, plus using our business writing. Then we're going to use the top of Rock Slide, which is actually insane in this room. I had forgotten how broken Rock Slide is in this room. So creating Earth, and we drop three rocks. So we're going to go with a rock here, rock here, and a rock here. Let me explain these choices. So by placing this rock here, this will cause this Lurker to move into this trap, suiciding, because this Lurker has 9 health and the trap does 9 damage. Amazing. And by placing the two rocks here, we're actually going to block off this Lurker and this Lurker. So this one's actually going to move into here, and this one's going to move into here. So we basically break the entire room. In addition to actually getting 2 damage on each of these, yeah. I mean, Krygar just single handedly winning this scenario, basically. Rock Slide. What a card. Honestly, one of my favorite design cards in the game. Not because of, I mean, situations which are this easy. Bear in mind, we're still playing with starting classes on the highest possible difficulty at only Prosperity 3, and this is going to be this easy. Now, admittedly, this is kind of a particular scenario. I didn't choose this for this purpose, but I had actually forgotten about how easy this room is with Rock Slide. Okay. Rock Slide Heart, yeah. Exactly. Can we agree completely? Very, very cool card. Okay, so the Lurker goes... Or the hardware goes, sorry, and does absolutely nothing because it doesn't move. Does have some additional retaliate. Don't really care about that, though. Okay, so the Diviner's up next. So we've got a Teleport 4. Give Shield 1 effect all eyes within range 3. We're going to go 1, 2, 3, 4. Fortunately, we're not going to have line of sight of you, huh? 
Eh, not much we can do about that. You we do have line of sight of, though. Yep. All right. And so then we're going to use the top of Planner Fisher, once again, creating a rift. I'm going to place that rift right here. I'm not even going to bother. Actually, I guess no. I should flip for here, because if I get a curse, it actually does do something. So I get to hit this, this, and this. I don't get to hit this, because I don't have line of sight of it. Um, this is a little bit of a theme fail to me, although this is, unfortunately, how the mechanics of Gloomhaven work. The fact that, well, I guess... No, I guess he did want this to be a ranged attack, not a melee attack. But yeah. Because if it wasn't made a melee attack and said target all enemies up to two hexes away from this rift token, then you would actually be able to hit this. It just feels a little bit weird, the fact that you like drop this rift, which theoretically like creates this sort of shock wave or explosion or something, which is what damages things. But the fact that you don't see this one, like it's like, haha, your shock wave doesn't touch me because you don't know that I'm here, you know? When you're not really shaping the shock wave. Anyway, pretty insignificant. Okay, so we have an attack. We'll do two, then three, then five. We might as well use our goggles here. We can probably long rest after the room again. Again, we don't need to use the power potion here because this room is so easy. So here, then here, and then here. So we have attack three plus one from the poison. So four, four, three, all with advantage. All muddling as well. Not that this really matters too much. So that's actually where we wanted to see the crit. So eight damage here, putting us down to seven. It is actually muddled because we go after it. Good matter. So then the one down here. Here we just want to see curses because this is dying no matter what. Okay. So three plus three is six, plus one from the poison seven, but one shield, so six down to three. And then the elite lurker. That's a shame. Our best, our worst flip on the one that we cared. Well, kind of second most about, I guess. All right, so four, it has two shields, so two damage, down to 14. I'm not gonna bother muddling it because it's just gonna lose the muddle when it goes. Okay, so we're done. So now the lurkers go. So this one is gonna move into this trap, nine damage, and immobilize, and it goes immobilized for next round as well, which is here. One goes into this trap, also nine damage, also immobilized. Again, this is, Oh no! Yeah, no, it has to. Yeah, the only way it can get out is escaping this. God, these rocks were just insane. <laughs> uh, and then this one goes into this, which actually kills us. Rock slide just was like a non loss there. Did like a million damage and also CC'd a bunch of enemies. Yeah, pretty good. How much actual damage did it do? So I think I actually forgot to do the two direct damage here, but anyway, it doesn't matter. We had, so eight direct damage plus three traps is 27. So we're looking at 35 direct damage plus CCing two enemies for, for four. So like for four total, I mean, I guess it wasn't really CCing any of them because neither of them were reaching us this turn. So it's really just one round of CC on two of them, but still. So like 35 damage and CC on two enemies. Yeah. Okay. Level four non loss. And again, to be clear, sometimes I, I like to dwell on, I mean, you've seen though, Rockside really varies. We've had a lot of scenarios recently where Rockside's actually been underwhelming. So I'm mean, like, I think this card's perfectly fine. I don't have concerns with the balance of this card. Even when I'm being like, yeah, I'm now I'm lost for 35 damage, you know? It's obviously a best case. Okay. Um, I mean, I think we can just use our compass to execute this. What else can we do? I guess like a heaving swing works. Be good if we go early, but we can't really go that early. So I guess we do a move four jump plus heaving swing. Yeah, seems fine. This uh, we, again, we'll just compass here. We'll go here, hit this into there, and that takes care of that. So, what our mind view friend? That leaves like this. We can make it to there with a move four jump. Have ice. So yeah, we should be able to finish it with this. We can even go late. Not really much to be gained from that, but we can go late. By going late, if uh, for some reason, I mean, if this goes before us, like we can, I mean, it doesn't really matter. We can use the ice for extra attack rather than stun, or we can stun anyway. I mean, I don't know. It's just a little bit safer since it's immobilized anyway. No, actually, because I guess it could heal itself, but its heal is going to be before 29 anyway, so I think that doesn't change too much. All right. 
So, yeah, because there are no more traps, so there's really no reason to save the compass. So this is going to die, this is going to die, this is going to die. So basically everything's going to die, huh? All right. Sounds good to me. No one needs healing. If we went early, we could give some curses. 23. Yeah, we could give some curses. So if we go as early as we possibly could, we'd have to go before 23. But basically mean having to use this. This gives two curses, this gives two curses. It's basically kind of the same. This also gives, this gives one curse. But if we play this bottom, then it gives two curses. Kind of all do very similar things, huh? I guess this hits multiple enemies, so it can draw more curses. Also creates dark. But we don't have the deck stacking thing anymore anyway. All right, let's just play this and we'll see. Hmm, 16, huh? Oh, gonna heal yourself too. Bit of an annoyance. And I wish we'd done something differently now. All right, well, so we're, for, we're gonna use our boots of speed to go at uh, 11 instead of 21. How very obnoxious. Unfortunately, we're one away from being able to pull that into a trap using the bottom of Fount. Because it's range three from us, we place the rift. So just pulling into there doesn't change much. We pull it into this rift, change anything. Investor's poison won't heal, that's true. The only thing is that it's actually going to move up to here, though, so it'll be out of range of the spike trap. So we'll actually have to kill it like the old-fashioned way with damage. We could stun it using our stun powder, but I don't really think it's worth it for this. I guess, was it really worth going before? Yeah, probably. Who knows? Maybe we pull it. But, but all right. Let's begin by using the top of Call of the Nether. So we're going to make an attack zero. We're going to shape it like this, just hitting these two. So we'll do the Harwar and then the Lurker. So here we go. I don't see any reason to do anything differently. Okay. Three damage here. One, four. And a curse. The other one. Uh, one damage, actually. Interesting. And we did create light. So I'll give them two curses. Okay, so then we can use Revitalizing Fount. Is there anything to be gained by doing that? I guess by placing another rift, it actually does something. It does much. Otherwise, we can move. So we're going to be the one getting hit here. And this only affects allies. So I guess we don't want to get hit because our best healing. At the same time, the Kryger also sells Roaming Advance. But we don't really want the Bless in our deck. Blesses aren't very good for us because we make attack zeros. So I guess I'll just use Fount to create a rift here. And I'm just going to pull the Harwar to here. Again, the reason for this is to make sure that it hits the Kryger rather than the Diviner. Okay, Harwar goes. Tax at minus one, normally attacks for five. So if you're four with Muddle targeting the Diviner. Okay, I just shuffled to make sure that I hadn't forgotten to shuffle after putting a curse in. Yes. Anyway, and again, it, it will heal, but it's poison, so it will not. Next up is the Kragart. I guess we'll begin by using the top of Heaving Swing here. This should actually just kill it. So we'll attack it. We will be using the push. We get a plus one. Oh yeah, this will definitely just kill it, actually. We make an attack three plus one from the modifier, so four. That does kill this. Can't quite make it to the chest, though, huh? We're using our jump this turn. A little bit annoying. We won't have the jump again. Mind Thief has plenty of jump, though. Mind Thief can theoretically make it. Because we do want to get that chest. I guess I'm just going to move to this point. Because I certainly don't want to go next to the Harwars, because this way they can't hit me. Okay. Or the Lurkers, sorry. So now the Lurkers go... Uh, really? Yice! That's annoying. 
They're going to consume my ice, strengthen themselves, and lose the immobilizes. That was a dick move. Okay, so now the Mind Thief goes. We have a move four jump with feedback loop. One, two, three, four to here. We're going to use the top of Frigid Apparition as an attack six simply, targeting the elite lurker. All right, two ice and eight. Four health and two shield, so it is dead. Right, and that's the end of the round. I'm going to quickly go refill my water. I shall be right back. All right, and back. So, what do we still have to deal with here? We just have this one lurker there, at three health. Mind Thief probably needs to go grab the chest. Mind Thief has a jump. But at the same time, it doesn't help too much to go there this turn because we won't be able to jump back next turn. So we could spend a turn not going there and then go get there afterwards. We've got Boots of Striding. We could like move up and attack this. We could also just not move up and attack it, and we could just use the bottom stun wound just so we don't have to worry about it. Keeps us closer to the chest. Although if we end up using our boots, it doesn't change anything. The stun wound does make sure that it absolutely does nothing. How easily can the diviner kill it? Is the question. Probably not with too much difficulty. I guess. Yeah, we can just do this and ah, but then we're losing out on all our, our cards with more movement. It would probably be better to do a move three, move three. In that case, we should actually have the Mind Thief move. Got to go. Since I was lurked and never typed anything, I just want to thank you at Gripeway for everything you do for the community, especially the guides and streams. And have a good one. Thank you very much. Thanks for stopping by. I appreciate it. And I'm happy to help out. Sorry that I've been a little bit less present recently in the, on the Gloomhaven subreddit. Unfortunately, it is a really busy time for me right now. Um, hopefully, after after the move, things should calm down a little bit more and I should be more of a regular back on the subreddit. And uh, yeah, thanks for tuning in. I hope you have a great day. Thanks for stopping by. a little bit annoying so two move threes because otherwise we just kind of lack movement on the, the diviner so i think it's better to try to get a move through every turn but this means we do need to move the mind thief but that's fine once you and we'll just go and grab the chest afterwards all right so we need to save this the other card doesn't really matter so much that we save we do have dark so we can actually just execute it it's cheesy but kind of why not right and i guess we can create any element by doing this sure. This allows the Diviner to then move three. Guaranteed. And play, I guess we can place a Rift down here. And then after that, maybe we can send another Rift up there. To just get a little bit of Ethereal Vortex movement. I mean, we've got nothing else to do, so we might as well use this opportunity to place a Rift with this. And this, I guess. Okay, well the crack art can do sort of whatever now. Yes, that means putting a bless into the mind thief deck again. And do we have a rift? No. Moving a fair amount. Or there it goes. Alright, so the mind thief's up first. We're gonna use the bottom of empathetic assault. Move to here. Heal ourselves for two strength, and I'm not gonna bother with all that stuff. Oh, we create any element better. 
we care about any elements this turn or next turn here. Not really. Uh, sure, we'll create Earth. Why not? And then we'll use the top. We'll activate Phantasmal Killer, taking down the Mind's Weakness. This gives us, uh, on your melee attacks, consume Dark to kill one normal target instead. We're going to consume the Dark and simply execute you. Again, we're avoiding leaning on this. We certainly could use this a lot more, but we're, we don't. Um, but yeah. We'll use it from that still. All right. So Craggy's up next. We're going to use the bottom of Massive Boulders and move four. I guess we can actually just get all the coins here, though, right? I don't need to be in that much of a rush. Although I guess the Diviner can go to this coin to this coin. Yeah, so sure. We'll use the bottom of Massive Boulder as a move four. One, two, four to this coin here. And then we'll use the top of Rumbling Advance, whatever, creating Earth again. Healing the Mighty for four, but mostly just shuffling, shuffling a Bless into her deck. Okay, so then the Diviner's up. So we have a move three with Seal Their Fate. Need all the move threes in the end, but so be it. Here, grabbing this coin. And then we're going to use the top of Void Snare. Rift. Five rifts, so we gotta replace one. Placing a rift here. And just making an easier path on the Mind Thief, hopefully afterwards. Okay, and Lurkers have been eliminated. So Mind Thief is gonna go jump down and grab the chest. Viner is gonna keep on keeping on. And the cry card, just on placement. Yes, we can play this before we enter the next room. Even just consider entering the next room. We've got Blind Destruction. I guess no matter what, we can save it for next turn. It sucks that we're going to lose the Earth here. But yeah, we can potentially use, like, I guess Blunt Force plus Blind Destruction would make more sense because then we would have Strength in for the following turn as well. So let's just play these two cards this turn. Okay, here goes. So, my piece up first, we're gonna do a move four jump, plus use our boots of striding for a total of six. One, two, three, four, five. All right, we grab this chest. We are going to be spoiling chest number 49 now. So fair warning, chest number 49 coming out. Here, nope, really not. New scenario, Lost Island, already have. Woof, that sucks. Most unfortunate. Okay, so then the cry art goes. We're gonna use Cataclysm Oops. here. And then the Diviner goes, and we're going to use the bottom of Ethereal Vortex. I'm not gonna link any rifts for now. I'm just using this as a move three. Going to here. And whatever. Giving some allies retaliate on top. Okay, so we're going to long rest. We're going to long rest. And so should we long rest or should we just bust in? I'm kind of tempted to bust in just because of how broken blind destruction is. We still even have our compass. We don't have our boots of striding though, so our movement is pretty limited and our allies are pretty far behind us. No guts, no glory, right? Let's do it. This should at least make the scenario maybe a little more challenging for us. It's probably not the correct play, but it is the fun play. So the reason why we're doing I mean, all right. So I say this, but like, I don't think it's 100% the incorrect choice. So the thing is, since we don't use stamina potions, it's difficult for us to do, I mean, like we can't do blind destruction into blind destruction. So basically by not resting here, we're actually getting an additional blind destruction in. We're gonna be able to do blind destruction into blind destruction by short resting immediately afterwards. It's actually really insane because of how good blind destruction is. So even though it's like kind of insane, we have two allies long resting pretty far back, and we're going to be opening a door by ourselves. The upside of getting additional blind destruction is really high. And we've got a lot of protection anyway. We're at 26 health. We still have a healing potion. We still got a compass. So we're like kind of all right. And we got a lot of cards we can lose, worst case scenario. So in we go. Blunt force to here. What is in this room? There, there. Ooh, deep terror is up front. Please not summon. All right, that's good. That's very fortunate for us. We've also got a horror. Hmm. Yeah, I mean that's something. Okay, so we need to place all these enemies. So we have one elite horror, and then we've got one elite deep terror, 
and five regular declares. Well, unfortunately, we don't have very much clumping, so we're not going to get great hits here. We also can't avoid getting hit, either. Alright, so let's see what we're up to. So we can move one more. It sucks that we don't have our Boots of Speed. Our Boots of Striding. I guess we actually can... We can do better here. So... Yeah, if we stop here... We even move up one more, but I don't think there's much of an advantage to that. We'll stop here. And then we're actually going to go ahead and use our compass. Amazing. Move this. We can put it here or here. Here is actually probably better for us because it has a worse, uh, its lines are worse. Where it can hit. Here, this entire center line is actually a bit more annoying. We also have to consider this because they do have all this, I mean, they have two of their eight cards that attack in lines like this. So we'll move that to there. Uh, by the way, we have one retaliate. Also strengthened. So now we're going to use the top of Blind Destruction as an attack for range four, where all allies and enemies adjacent to the target suffer damage equal to the damage the target suffered. So one, two, three, four, targeting elite number seven. Plus one, plus one. Okay, so this turns our attack into a five. And I guess we could just use our power potion here. Yeah, we might as well. All right, make that six in the end. Six damage here. Six damage here. Here. Alright, not bad. And that's our turn. And the hardware goes is minus one movement, so it's three movement, but attacks in a three line, so it actually only needs to go here to be able to hit us. Two movement. Attacks for plus zero, so norm it doesn't have dark to consume, so it makes an attack five on the cryheart. Hope I remember to shuffle when I put this in. Pretty sure I did. Alright, so a whiff. And then the deep terrors go, and they're also just attacking on lines, five away, but none of them are on a line with it. Oh, well, good. All right, so we get a long rest there and there. We'll bring back Phantasm Killer, because I don't plan on cheesing this scenario, even though I certainly could. Again, not really my style. Accordingly, I think I'm actually just going to get rid of Phantasmal Killer. I don't think I need the invisibility that much in this last room. Craigrath's already in there, and it's pretty easy. I mean, it's not that easy to avoid Deep Terrors, but I'd rather have most of my other cards. More movement is pretty essential, and then my better attack. Okay, so as for us, honestly, Call of the Nether at this point is pretty underwhelming. Oh, well, we do have a nice little three target. Do I really care that much about giving three curses? No, to be perfectly honest, I don't. I'd rather just be doing like attack with Planner Fisher and to attack with a Hero Vortex, you know? I guess at the same time, the Disarm Rift is actually terrible now because none of these enemies move. Yeah, actually the Disarm Rift is just worse. All right, there we go. I mean, only one of the enemies in the entire room. That's my point. So, Cracker needs to short rest. We just can't lose blind destruction. I mean, that sucks as well, because that's actually my best initiative. I don't have a very good initiative now, but... Because now the there's a decent chance the horror moves before us, which we really don't want. I don't want to use this, because I'd rather give strength in after losing a strength, and I still strength for this round. So I'm going to go with my next best initiative. This is actually pretty significant. I could try re-rolling on this to keep this. I would only really be sad if I re-rolled into Blind Destruction, but even then I've still got Rock Slide, which is not bad. Yeah, I actually think this is worth the re-roll, to be honest. All right, here we go. Did not blind destruction. That's fine. That is more than fine. I think I'm happy with that. Again, if I got blind destruction, I would have been really unhappy. That would have been a big loss. But I mean, I'm not in danger of losing the scenario anyway. And it was still only a one out of nine. I don't think I should have like accepted what was a pretty important card here to be able to go at thirteen against the hard before it moves, just to play around at eleven percent. 
This is an XCOM. All right. So we need to do some rifts. So the Mind Thief can teleport on up here. Ah, so we actually kind of want to keep this. So yeah, let's just get rid of this then. Because the Disarm Rift is a rift that actually does something as well. We need to do this plus this. So the reason why is by moving to here with Ethereal... Oh no, we, we have to move with Ethereal Vortex first before placing the rift. Okay, one, two, three, four, five. All right, no, no, never mind, never mind. So we can lose the disarm. That's not going to be useful here. The problem is we have to link the two rifts that are already created. We need to move first. If we do the disarm rift, we can only place it here. And then linking that doesn't help so much. So the one, two, three, four, five, the, the five range rift is actually significantly better for this. We're basically just going to place that rift here. And then we're going to link this rift and that rift, allowing the mind thief to just essentially pop out immediately into this fight. Very Avengers style, which is pretty awesome, actually. The Mind Thief does need to do a sort of jump. Which means this one or this one. 39 actually does take us after 23. But at the same time, there's no reason to go early. It's probably better to go late. This way, they, we, I mean, we're less likely to get hit by the Deep Terrors. And we do need to set up Mind's Weakness anyway. Okay. This gives us a turn. Let's go. Ah, beating us anyway, even going at 13. Okay, fair enough, Harwar. Fair enough. The Harwars, oh, and they're also going after the Mind Thief. There are a lot of unfortunate things happening here. All right, Harwar is going first. Gonna move up to here and attack the Kraghard. Creates dark, attacks at minus one, so normally five. Here, four. So two. But we do get poison. Okay, next up is the Kraghard's turn. So we're still gonna use Blind Destruction. We're still going to attack the Elite, I suppose, because we'd rather have more damage there. And this will kill the regular. So we attack the Elite with Blind Destruction. We have advantage, so we'll just attack first. Okay, typical Kraghard stuff. So five damage there. Puts you down to four. Does five damage here as well, which kills. And then we're going to use the bottom of Unstable All People's default move 2. This. Yeah, I think I'm just going to keep moving up. And I will Endurance Potion this back. Because again, I have an odd hand size, so this gives me an extra turn and gives me my best initiative back. Mm, I think I'm actually just going to use my Mana Potion here to create Ice as well. This will allow the Mind Thief to attack for 5 rather than 3, which gives us a much... I mean, like, basically gives us a guaranteed kill on this. Now even a minus one. Well, I guess we don't even have a minus one in our deck, do we? No, we do have a minus one. Yep. All right, so that's significant. Because now a zero or a minus one gets us a kill. Okay, so the Diviner's going to go next. We're going to use Dimensional Divide, basically just to place a Rift Token at range five. Placing this here. One, two, three, four, five. And then we're going to use Ethereal Vortex Bottom. Place one of your character tokens on any two separate Rift Tokens until the end of the round. The hexes containing these Rift Tokens are considered adjacent to each other for purposes of movement for you and all of your allies. Let me do it. We're gonna link, I'm not placing the tokens, but we're linking this Rift here and this Rift here. We do a move three. That's in here. Okay. So then the Mind Thief goes. We're gonna do the bottom feedback loop as a move four jump. One, two, three, four. I get hit by this deep terror and this deep terror in range four this round. I guess we should use our cloak and visibility as well while we're at it. And then we're going to attack with a mind's weakness. So this is an attack three. We're going to consume the ice using our frigid blade. Make this into an attack five, targeting the elite deep terror number seven. Yeah, and we would have been fine anyway, but this. Okay, so we're done, and the Deep Terrors go, so they attack adjacent, and then they attack at range 4. 1, 2, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, so the Mind Thief is invisible, and the Kraghard's outside of the range, so they're not hitting anyone. Okay, so that's that. Now we need to retreat back just a little bit and deal with this Harrower. So, momentum is good, and honestly, strengthening ourselves before attacking also generally pretty good. Hopefully, it doesn't do it 16 initiative, give itself more retaliate. No, it doesn't have that. All right. 
right? Finer. What are you up to? Move three, making some attacks. Banner Rift is good, but we won't have line of sight of most of them, so we can't actually, unless we like here, but that's not possible. Hmm. Choose we just don't have a good top here. Punch it. But punching it sucks actually because then we have we attack with disadvantage, we get retaliated twice. I don't love that so much. I guess we can just default our top here. I suppose I'll play Planner Fisher, because you never know, we'll see. And we can either default it back or we can end up maybe using it depending. Depending on what's necessary. Alright, so now the mind thief is up. I'm gonna do empathetic assault. So strengthen. I'm gonna put it down here and again try to mess this thing up. Don't have ice. So I suppose we should just go ahead and use Corrupting Embrace. We're going to take a lot of Retaliate. This thing has 4 Retaliate, but we have full health. And Corrupting Embrace is really good for attacking. End this, huh? Alright, so the Harbor goes first. It's going to heal itself for 4. It's going to attack the Cragheart. Minus 1, but plus 1 for the Poison. However, it's disadvantage because it's attacking adjacent. Okay, minus 1, minus 1. So again... This is a base 5, minus 1, but plus 1 because of the poison, so the minus 1 is a 4 damage to the Kragart. And the Kragart gets muddled. Alright. So it's done. These things are attacking at range 5 in the end, huh? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So the Kragart also needs to move down. Alright, that works though. So the Harwar's done, so that's the Mind Thief's turn. We're going to use the bottom of Empathetic Assault to do a move to here. We are invis for the turn, creating ice, strengthening ourselves, and then we're going to use the top of Corrupting Embrace to attack the Harwar. Is it worth stunning it? Probably not. I think it should die before it ever goes again. I'd rather save my stun powder, I think. All right, so we've got an attack three poison and an attack four muddle, both strengthened, targeting the Harwar. Okay, well we got the stun anyway. So four damage. Round 20, poisoned and stunned. Take 4 retaliate. Let me attack it again. Okay, so our attack was for 4, so 5. And we take 4 more retaliate. Ouch. Alright, so then the crack hurts up. We're going to use the bottom blunt force as a 2. I think we're actually supposed to have retaliated it for 1, but I kind of forgot. No, yeah, yeah we, no, no, no. The turn we had retaliated, it made its line attack. All right, so we strengthen ourselves to counteract the muddle. We're going to attack with blunt four or brutal momentum. We will be using the push. There we go. Neither advantage nor disadvantage. All right, nice. So our three plus one from the poison, so it's six, so it's eight. Down to seven, and then twice we'll push it into a wall, like so. Takes four more direct down to three. And then we take the 4 Retaliate on the 15. And we lose the model. Okay. Then the Diviner's up. We're going to use the bottom of Sealed Our Fate. Can't actually move up. 1, 2, 3. Yeah, because then we get hit by this. I don't really want that, so we'll just stay where we are. Moving in place. Making an Attack 2, Range 3, Curse. Targeting the Horror. Plus three, so this is two, plus three is five, plus one from the poisons of six. Uh, that actually kills our ore. Like I said, won't have another turn. That's not what we're dropping there. That is. How much movement do we have? We actually don't have any movement except for the swap, but that doesn't really do much. We go to here, have a line of sight of just these two. We would be able to hit with Planner Fisher. The question is whether we should Endurance Potion Planner Fisher back. We would hit two targets with an attack three muddle. It's not bad. With our modifier deck, that's quite good still. Yeah, I think I'll take that. I want to Endurance Potion this 
rest cycle anyway. So I'll use my endurance potion to recover a planner. Using the top to do. Okay, deep terrors go. Their longest range attack is, attack is range five. Again, one, two, three, four, five. So that's not hitting it. And that's the end of the round. So I guess I'd rather keep the heal, maybe. So we're gonna use this. Setting up more rifts is also not bad, but I think I just kind of have to keep moving every turn, so it probably doesn't matter. I suppose I'd rather try to go after them no matter what. Go like this. Okay. Uh, yeah, same thing. I think going after them is good. Dropping some rocks. Moving a fair amount. I can do with this. Also like to go after them, but that's not really possible for us. We do not have any elements that we want to make our nightmare good. Fortunate. Third Nightmare is good here. We're hitting a bunch of enemies. We're only at six health. We can actually stun one of them with Sun Powder. Yeah, that's probably worth doing. I should have used a Mana Potion. Four, but no one's going before me now, right? Yeah, 21 or 23 would be the earliest. Well, the Kyra doesn't even have Mana Potion. He could go as early as 11, but unfortunately the two cards I'm going to play here, my initiative is going to be... Oh well, we miss out on Poison Curse. I mean, this sucks, but... Will be alright. Alright, here it goes. Line attack at six. The mind thief stuff, we're gonna use Dark Frenzy as a move three. One, two, three to here. Works. Grabbing this coin. Then we get an attack three, range three, which creates ice. We'll make our attack three, range three, hitting number eight here, because if we kill this one, then we don't even need to stun it. See what we do on this first attack. And yep. Okay. Now that should get us a kill, I think. Not here, but next. So our three gets plus one and then a bless. So four and then bless becomes eight. Puts this down to one. Perfect. Now we don't have to use our stun powder. So then we'll use the top of Shared Nightmare as simply an attack three, range four, target two. Already a fine card. We'll be hitting number eight and then number nine in that order. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Well. Okay, that's fine. So we get like plus a blunt. I mean we get plus two minus one, which is plus one, but we're making attack three on something with one health, so we get the kill. Alright, we're dead. Then we hit number nine, which is the only one other other one in line of sight. Okay, not just three damage, but again. This is fine. Okay, so the Deep Terrors go now. Just got to level 8 on Mind Thief this morning. Excited to take Shard Nightmare for a spin. Yeah, it is fun. I mean, as you can see, it's like... What's great about Shared Nightmare is... Because the uh, Mind Thief's modifier deck is so good, I think in Attack 3 is... I think we're at, like, plus 1.1 or something. Actually, see. I'm curious, and we've got a little bit of time, so why not? Let's see how much damage a Mind Thieves modifier deck typically does. Uh, go. Just take a second. Zoom out. Reset the deck. So we have one minus one, we have zero minus twos. I believe we have, what do we have in this deck normally? Do we have any zero ambiguouses? No, but we do have just two zeros. No, we have three zeros, right? Because we remove four, we add one. Normally there's six to start. Yeah, I guess we can just look in our deck now since it's about to get reshuffled. Yeah, so we have three zeros in the end. Zero, none of them ambiguous. Okay, then we have one, two, three, I think it's actually, yeah, yeah no, it's probably fine to look at it like this. We have three regular ones and four rolling ones. 
Then we have, I think, three back here. We have three regular plus twos and then two ambiguous plus twos. All right, I think that's everything. Yeah. Oh, we've also got, yes, we've got a rolling stun, a ro rolling model, rolling stun, rolling disarm. I'll just not put those in because these are difficult. I mean, like, you can't really calculate these. And this will, like, the positives of stun and disarm and then the negatives of model, it's probably easier just not to look. All right. So, yeah, on a base attack three for the Mind Thief with this deck, our expected damage value without advantage is 4.12. And our expected damage value with advantage, which again happens quite often because of empathetic assault, is 4.48. So that means that even making an attack with shared nightmare, like this one here, for example, where we have advantage, which again, it's pretty easy to get advantage before doing it, and it's multi-target, means at essentially 4.5 per target, we're looking at 9 damage from shared nightmare without even using an element consumption. And then it also creates ice for us, which again, here we have Frigid Blade, but even just with like things like Dark Frenzy or Frigid Apparition, there's still an additional bonus. So even without consuming Dark on Dark on Shared Nightmare, you're already looking at like a non-loss attack nine approximately with some additional upside, which is very easy to do again because it's two target range four. And then obviously with the upside of when you consume the element, it gets so much better. Like yeah, Shared Nightmare is just great. Good without the element consumption, exceptional with the element consumption and everything i mean like it's still just a move five on bottom for when you need that you know great card great card okay uh so deep terrors go their line attacks can't hit anyone here so next up we have the diviner yeah this is gonna suck in the end so be it we're gonna use the bottom of revitalizing fount simply as default move two going to here Give me my coin. Then we're going to use the top of Planner Fisher, placing this rift at range four. So one, two, three, four to here. And then we get to make an attack three muddle, targeting everything in, within range two of this. But this, we don't have line of sight. We do have line of sight at this one, however. Pretty positive. All right. So we just get to make an attack three, muddle, targeting uh, Deep Terror number nine. No reason to use anything special here. Yep, uh, give plus one shield to an ally. Four damage, down to two. It's also muddle, who knows, that might matter. Probably won't, but it never, never know that. Okay. So then it is, Oh yeah, actually, this being down to two is great. Okay, right. this is the Craig Earth's turn. So we're going to do a move four jump at the bottom of Meteor. One, two, four to there. And we don't have our boots, so we can't move any more than that, but that's fine. We're going to use Rock Slide, creating Earth. Drop some rocks. We're going to drop a rock here. I like having rocks around them, again, to push into. So I'll put a rock there as well. Uh, this is going to make the Mind Thief's life a little more difficult. Eh, I think that's fine. Maybe this isn't even... Oh, yeah, because this one will be dead. Yeah, we'll have plenty of space. And we'll just put another rock here out of the way. All right, so two damage to this one kills it. Maybe two damage here. Here. All right. The round. Make sure it shuffled since we kind of messed with it. So, you old mind thief, we don't have our boots of striding, huh? Did we actually use them? Sure, but I will. We'll move here and attack this one. That works. So, uh, so, we need to go kill this one. It's not so easy. Do we have brutal momentum? Do not. I guess this just works regardless. 
one free draft damage in bottom, wound on top, plus the earth consumption with our blade. And yeah, Diviner's just gonna play these two cards. We'll go later and see what happens. Okay, here goes. I'm getting so ridiculously lucky. They haven't flipped a summon once this scenario. We've had really gross luck this scenario, to be honest. Which has made it really easy. Okay, Mind Thieves up first. We're gonna use the bottom first edge as default move two, going to here. Then we're going to use. Uh, I guess I don't want this attacking. But I can also just use my gunpowder. So, Frigid Apparition is an attack four, plus Mind's Weakness is an attack six. So I think it makes sense to use Frigid Blade to consume the ice to get to an attack 8. This way, even a minus 1 kills. And just on the off chance that we fail to kill, we'll just go ahead and use our Stun Powder just to be safe. So we have an attack 8 stun targeting the adjacent D. Okay, well, I think we killed it. We an attack 16 stun. Alright, Cracker Hearts up next. We're going to use the bottom of Rumbling Advance. 3 to here. Push down anymore. One direct damage here, down to six. Does one direct damage to the mind thief? How dare you? Then we're going to attack with heaving swing. This is an attack three. We're going to use the tremor blade to consume our earth. So this gives us an attack five wound push. We will be using the push, even though we're not going to push it through anything, just to avoid the retaliate, just in case we don't kill it. No, no we killed it. It's dead. All right. And then the diviner is going to go, and we're just going to do a default move two. To here. Alright. Gonna short rest at this point. My two other characters don't really turn off. Oh no, I actually want to keep that because it's a bigger move. Sure. Bye. I'm not gonna milk experience, but I will grab the coins in this room. No reason to milk the experience, so we'll pull up for all level nine. Alright, short rest here. No reason to bring this back. Again, it's just not important. Uh, I think I want to keep the move jump. I guess I've got feedback loop though, still, so. This works. Alright. The Diviner wants to make it to this coin. And after that, I move three there. So. Mind Thief doesn't care about coins at all, so Mind Thief can just move out of here. This. And the Cry Guard's doing stuff. So, us, we need our move four here. The other card we play doesn't really matter. We could, yeah, placing a rift does allow us to then do the linking, although it also doesn't really matter too much. Here we go. Mind Thief first. We're going to move four jump. One, two, three, four. I'm going to press eliminate on the Mind Thief from now on so that I don't have to mess with it anymore. Right heart goes. We're going to do a move with one of our cards here. Moving. Here we go. Diviner goes, we're going to do a teleport four. One, two, three, four to here. Okay, end of the round. Drag our short rest just to be faster. Mind Thief, not actually eliminated. We have turns, but we're already at the exit and I don't need to mess around with the Mind Thief anymore. All right, play these cards. Again, we just need to move to the exit. Diviner just needs a Right, here goes. So Cragart does move four, exit. Diviner doesn't move three, using the other fate. Three, the other card we play doesn't matter. We should actually probably shouldn't have the regen anymore. We lost it when we short rest. I kind of forgot it there. Okay, and then the next round, the Diviner can play these two cards and we make it out. That's that. All right. Really easy, unfortunately. Like I said, we got. My filthy RNG. Cracker also made the second room really easy. Cracker plus Diviner made the first room really easy. That sort of stuff. All right. So let's do our post scenario. But really, at this point, we just get money and nothing else. I think this is just a pretty easy scenario on the whole. Yeah, I think that's probably generally true. Unfortunately, our scenario choices are pretty limited by the fact that, again, we, um... We can't do any boss scenarios, and a lot of the additional scenarios are locked behind that, so we're just kind of doing what few scenarios we still can do.
for spoiler purposes no not actually for spoiler purposes in this instance in this case i would actually go with doing spoilers we've already done three it's actually for the mind thief the mind thief's uh, personal quest is to complete four boss scenarios yep because of retirement exactly mind thief has already completed three boss scenarios so if we complete another boss scenario the mind thief will actually retire i don't i mean like it's not that i couldn't play another character it's just again just finish that personal quest this morning okay cool but yeah it's just that um like retiring the mind thief and then introducing a level three character into an otherwise level nine party is just going to create like kind of unfun imbalance and it's going to make things a little bit wonkier especially like you know, with two characters being level nine and having one character level three it's just really unfun for that one character you know now technically i'm controlling all of them but still i think that's not not really the best gloomhaven playing like that so instead i mean i'll just I'm going to play these characters just a little bit longer, and then that'll be the end of this campaign. Maybe after next week. We shall see. All right, so let's clear up this. We're just going to do one more scenario today. Again, still playing with these cards on the Diviner, just to get as much experience as possible with the Diviner, playing with these cards. Okay, so let's do post scenario. We didn't grab the... Uh, it's actually blesses in the mind thief stack right yeah okay so 36 42 gold ah here 30 gold and here 18 gold Uh, so that's that. So the next scenario that we're going to do, so that was scenario 37. Unfortunately, I believe this just, yeah, unlocked a uh, another boss scenario for us. We're really getting boxed in by these boss scenarios. So it's there. All right. I can check that off. Yeah, through the trench, I think is what it's called. Or is it through the breach? Through the trench. So we're not going to be doing that. So I believe we had decided, I think I decided that I would do 68 next. This is just, again, another non-boss scenario. And yeah, we're running out. Maybe I'll have some fun trying to cheese. I mean, have some fun in 38. Normally these things don't go together, but it's possible with the Divine and the Kragar we can just enjoy that. Yeah, because we're almost out, actually. Can't do this one anymore. So there's just this. We can't do this one. So we've got like this, 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 this. We didn't check this off, but we've completed this one as well. Yeah? Yeah, we do not have much left. So one, two, three, four. That leaves that. But this one will unlock one more non-boss for us. So that technically does give us enough if we need to do four scenarios next week to just barely be able to do it all, right? Doing 68 here and then 67, 71. God, we just did 71 not too long ago either. Oh, wait, no. We do 71 in this campaign? I think we actually maybe did. Hmm. I have to look into that. I think we may have actually even already done this one. We just did it again in another campaign. I know we've done it in another campaign, but anyway, we'll worry about that later. Neither here nor there. Okay, so next up is going to be Scenario 68. We're going to take a small eating break. I guess I'm just going to cut this recording now.